My name is Michał Pleban and I would like to show you how to run MS-DOS on this Commodore computer. Some of you may recognize it as the CBM2, the business computer that Commodore introduced in 1982 as a successor to the Commodore PET. It has several improvements over the PET, for example 2 MHz system clock and 256 kilobytes of memory, which is quite a lot for a 6502 system. It has even a SEED chip, which will become handy just in a few minutes. But unfortunately for Commodore, a few months earlier, IBM introduced the PC, a 16-bit system which ran MS-DOS. And for a while, everybody thought that MS-DOS is going to become the new standard in business computing, just like CPM was before. And like CPM, you could adapt MS-DOS to your specific hardware architecture just by replacing the I.O. functions. In this way, a lot of different MS-DOS compatible computers appeared on the market, just like the Digital Equipment Rainbow or Victor 9000, which was designed by Chuck Pebble. So Commodore wanted to join this market too, and that's what they came up with. This is an Intel 8088 processor card for the CBM2. With it, you can create a dual processor system or actually even a triple processor system because you can also install the 8087 MAFCO processor. Those processors work together. There is an arbitration mechanism which determines which processor can access the main memory. There is a communication mechanism so the CPUs can pass messages to each other and the messages can be passed both ways. So you can have an application working on the Intel processor calling the 6502 to perform some kind of I.O. because only 6502 can have access to the keyboard screen or disk. But you can also have an application such as a spreadsheet working on a 6502 and calling the Intel processor to perform some calculations because it's faster. So that's quite a fascinating hardware architecture and Commodore adapted MS-DOS 1.25 to it. So basically you could run MS-DOS on it, but the problem is you couldn't run any applications. Because the applications written for the PC usually used several distinct hardware features of the PC, such as the video memory, the memory layout, the specific I.O. devices, because there was no API in MS-DOS to use them. So even if it's MS-DOS compatible, but it's not PC compatible, you cannot run any software. So those computers that were not PC compatible very quickly failed in the market. Unfortunately, that's also what happened with the CBM2. And that got me thinking, what would it require to make this uh, very different uh, hardware architecture PC compatible? And it turns out that you can achieve a very high degree of PC compatibility with software only. So without any kind of hardware modifications. And for that, you just need to do two things. First, to implement the PC BIOS interface, which means implementing interrupt 1.0 for screen access, interrupt 1.3 for disk access, interrupt 1.6 for keyboard access, and so on. So there's around 30 or 40 I.O. functions that need to be present for the architecture to become PC compatible. That may seem a lot, but they're actually simple wrappers for the existing I.O. functions that can be found in the kernel just with the interface identical to the PC. And the second thing you need to do is to emulate the video memory because most of the PC applications write to the video memory directly because that's faster. So they expect the video memory to be located in a specific place in memory. So to perform the emulation, we just need to copy this uh, memory location to the real video memory found on the 6502 side. And that can be done, for example, using a timer interrupt. And that's it. With those two things, which are a software-only solution, we can run not just MS-DOS, but a whole slew of PC applications such as Norton Commander, Turbo Pascal, VisiCalc, 
and so on. That's quite impressive in itself, but we can do even better. We can create virtual PC hardware, by which I mean software routines that make the architecture look like it has specific I.O. peripherals, which it doesn't. And for that, we need some kind of virtualization environment. So how do we create a virtualization environment on the Intel 8080A processor? Well, it's simple. This is a virtualization environment. And it works by connecting the I.O. access signal and the non-maskable interrupt signal. So that every time the software tries to access some I.O. port, an interrupt is generated and the interrupt routines performs whatever emulation is necessary to make the, the hardware look like it has this peripheral. So for example, we can emulate a very important part of the PC architecture, which is the PC speaker. The PC speaker uses two hardware ports, one for frequency of the sound and one for turning it on and off. So by intercepting accesses to those two I.O. ports and redirecting them to appropriate seat registers, we can make the machine to emit sound just as if it had the PC speaker. So in less than 50 lines of code, we can create a virtual PC speaker that, that works just like the original one. To, to use all of this, I created the replica of the original 8080A processor card. Because the original card never made it into a production, so if you want to use some rare hardware, the best way is just to make a replica of it. And that's it, with some nice features added. So there's one megabyte of memory here, there is a memory card for storage, there is a real-time clock which is battery backed and so on. But in essence, it is the same hardware like the original. And you can even run the original MS-DOS 1.25 if you are so masochistic. But it can do also much more. And let's see what actually it can do. So the computer starts with Commodore Basic, just as if you would expect it to. But we can also switch it to the Intel side. Oh, there's a nice boot menu. So let's boot the computer and see what happens. Yes, it runs FreeDOS. So we can use not just some old versions of MS-DOS, but also a modern version of FreeDOS works as well. Huh. So what about Norton Commander? Does it work? Well, yes, it looks like it does. So what about this directory? Could it be Turbo Pascal, maybe? Let's see if Turbo Pascal works. Just give it a few seconds. Turbo Pascal works perfectly. So maybe we could program some Pascal. That's a cute little Pascal program, which looks deceptively simple, but to actually make it work, there's a lot of magic that needs to happen. To make the delay work, there needs to be timer interrupt. To make the sound work, there needs to be the virtualization support. So let's see if it works. So as you can see, we have created a PC compatible computer basically with a software only solution. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thanks for watching it. So if you want, if you want to find out more about the Intel 88 processor card or the PC compatibility software that I wrote, just check out my website, where you will find all the latest information about this project.